Welcome to week two. This week our focus is on learning activity design. We're asking you to think about online courses that you've done before, either as a student or as a teacher, and in particular learning activities that you did within those courses that worked particularly well. You can also draw on your experience of more traditional classroom-based activities, but in that case you'll need to think about how to translate those activities into the online environment. The main activity this week is to contribute to an inventory of online activities. You'll need to design your own activity and find a way to represent it to your colleagues in such a way that it is easy for them to understand how that activity works without necessarily knowing anything about the content students will engage with or the content, course context in which the activity will take place. So in this short video, I want to introduce you to some learning activity design tools that you might use. These are tools to help you think through your activity design and also to help you represent your final design to others. The resources page here in week two contains links to those tools and related resources. But first, let's think about what we mean by learning activity. In the mid-2000s, I was fortunate enough to contribute to a series of national effective practice with e-learning workshops hosted by the JISC, the Joint Information Systems Committee in the UK. I'll start with the design tools that were used in those workshops, which are still available on the JISC website. A link is provided in the resources section. Before looking at the design tool that we used in those workshops, here's the a possible model of how we might think about a learning activity that we presented in those workshops. It suggests that there are four key components to designing a learning activity. First, we need to be utterly clear about the intended learning outcomes. Next, we need to think about our learners, and in particular their special needs, prior experience and knowledge. Then we need to think through the constituent parts of the learning environment, paying special attention to the resources and the technologies that we need to be available in order for the learning activity to be successful. Finally, we need to think about other support structures, which might include pre-prepared scaffolding materials like guides, as well as other teaching and administrative support. Using this framework, we offered participants in the workshops a tool that we called the Effective Practice Planner. Effectively, the Effective Practice Planner is a table containing a series of questions about the decisions that might need to be made by the learning designer. If you look closely, you'll find that the rows in the Effective Practice Planner correspond loosely to the four elements of the learning design framework that I presented earlier. Some of you might find this a convenient way to think about and to represent your design. Next, I want to show you an approach that I do quite like personally. This approach was promoted by Ron Oliver in Australia in a national project called the AUTC project. There's a link to the project website on the resources page. If you visit the website, you can find exemplar learning designs like this one. Notice that the learning design consists of just three sections. In the middle, the specific tasks that students must do in the sequence that they must do them. On the left hand side, in blue, are listed the relevant resources that students will need in order to be able to carry out each of those tasks. In the right hand column, in the orange colour, the other supports that will need to be provided as students work their way through those tasks. You can see that this example is a learning design for an extended semester long group activity. One of the benefits of this way of representing the learning activity over the previous tabular form is that it shows the activity as a sequence. I also find it a relatively simple way of representing a design. I guess it matches a bit how I think. So here's an example I worked up earlier myself, just using a Word document and a three-column table. 
This is one way of representing the icebreaker's activity that you might have done in week one of this course. There's a link to a PDF version on the resources page if you want to linger over it. Take a good look at it and think about whether it represents the key elements of that activity and their structure reasonably well. Of course, one could provide either more or less detail. Your preference and purpose will govern that. One last example. If the previous one was a little simpler than the first example, the next one is much more complex. This is a piece of work led by Diana Lorillard that's been in development for oh, at least six or seven years now. It's called The Learning Designer, and it's an interactive tool with a web interface in which you input information about your activity and or your course, and it represents the learning design for you. You can use the learning designer to design an activity or even to design an entire course. Along with the design tool itself, there's a set of exemplars and learning design resources. And you may find those in particular to be extremely helpful. The resources page in Moodle contains a link to the learning designer. You'll need to create yourself an account, but that'll take only about 30 seconds. Here's an example of a learning activity called wiki debates being used in sports science. Notice how the design is represented. There's a framework being used in which there are four types of things that students can be asked to do. Produce, collaborate, investigate and discuss. Notice the pie chart on the top right hand of the screen gives you an a visual breakdown of the rough proportions in which those elements happen in this learning activity. In the table below, detail is provided about each section of the activity. The representation here provides the viewer with descriptions of which type of activity is taking place at each stage in the sequence, whether it's an individual or group activity, how long it will take, whether tutor support is required and provides links to resources that are needed, if relevant. Now, in order to see how that representation has actually been produced, you would need to actually go in and use the learning design tool yourself and input some information. I'm afraid we just don't have the time here to do that, but I do suggest that you go to the site and have a play. Okay. There's just three examples of learning design tools. You're probably also already familiar with Jilly Salmon's framework called Etivities, and there are many others around. For the week two inventory activity, choose one that feels right for you. We're looking forward to getting a nice set of activity designs that we can share and use for creative inspiration. Thanks for listening. Bye for now. We're looking forward to seeing your designs.